Now, I did mention in period zero today that while we were talking about properties, the reason for me to gather them into groups like this is so that you can um, hang them sort of on, in your mind as like, it's not just a bunch of random things. Hey, Drew, grab a seat. Um, but at the same time, these properties clearly overlap. So I'm going to give you angle properties now. But we'll come back to other properties that also clearly involve angles. So uh, it's not like these are the only ones at all. So I'm going to give you a couple of really nice, lovely properties. And one of the great things about this is that I expect many of you will draw a diagram just like mine. But the beautiful thing about circles and geometry in general is that if it's a property or a theorem, it's true whatever kind of circle that you draw, whatever combination of particular intervals, so long as they're the kind, the, the, the category of intervals I'm going to mention, um, they'll do all the same thing. So for instance, in your first circle, what I'd like you to do is draw for me a diameter. Any diameter you like, there's an infinite number of diameters in a circle, so pick one. Here's a diameter. And what you'll notice, <coughs> excuse me, is that a diameter is just a special kind of chord, right? I suppose you could define, one of the ways you could define a diameter is it's the longest chord you can possibly draw in a circle. Do you agree with that? Like you've got to join two points in the circumference, no chord can possibly be longer than the diameter. Okay. The chord, the diameter, blocks off two segments that happen to be both equal. So there's no minor segment or major segment in this case. They're both the same size. What I want you to do is pick a point, any point on the circumference, anywhere you like, literally anywhere, and make it different to the person next to you. Okay? So I'm going to put my point up here. Okay. Here comes the magic. No, where, no matter where you've drawn your point, if you now form a triangle which joins up the ends of your diameter to your cho chosen point. So you're going to join up the ends of your diameter to your point. Join them up and create a triangle. And you should notice something quite amazing about your triangle. And look at the one next to you as well, uh, of your friend. No matter where you have drawn your triangle or picked your point, what kind of a triangle have you drawn? You've drawn a right angled triangle. You cannot escape it. No matter where you put this point, you can move him around. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate an interesting property down here. No matter where you draw it, you can draw a whole series of them if you like. No matter where you've drawn them, you'll get a right angled triangle again and again and again. So the name of this property is because the segment that you drew off was actually not just any segment, it's a semicircle, it's exactly half the semicircle. The name of this property is the angle in a semicircle is a right angle, or 90 degrees is even faster to write than saying a right angle. Okay? Angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Okay, so how are we going to prove it? It's a delightful proof. It's so quick. I'm going to show it to you. You'll get the essence of it, and then I'll ask you to prove it like formally later on. Okay. Let's give this thing some names, shall we? Center of the circle, what are you going to call it? O. O. Sake of consistency. Uh, let's call this diameter something like, say, AB. And you've got a third point up there, so let's call him C. Okay. Now, as we noticed with our proofs earlier this morning, often a construction is very important. And in circle geometry, more than anywhere else, you will need to add constructions onto your diagram when you're required to make proofs that are not there already. So here's what I'm going to add on. The radius OC. Can you join that up for me? The radius of OC. There we go. Now, once you see that, I wonder how your brain is ticking over. Remember what we're trying to prove. What we're required to prove is that, or what we're aiming to prove is that ACB is 90 degrees, always 90 degrees, no matter what. Okay. What kinds of shapes have I created by joining up this um, radius OC? What kind of shapes do you see? I see triangles, and they're not just any triangles. What kind of triangles are they? 
They're all isosceles. Why is that? There's a reason. They're all radii. OC was a radius. AO is a radius. V, they're all good, right? So in fact, maybe you want to even um, mark them in as such. So having made this pair of isosceles triangles, what are the kinds of things that you know about isosceles triangles? You know you've got a pair of equal sides. What else? You've got a pair of equal angles. Which of those do you think is going to be more useful to me in trying to prove this? Probably over the angles, right? This is a statement about an angle. Okay, they're all statement about angles. So therefore, where are the equal angles? We've drawn our diagram, or well, I've drawn my diagram so it's quite easy to see. For instance, in AOC, which are the equal angles? You can name them, can't you? Come on, they have names. A, ACO, this small one up here, and CAO, the opposite one. Okay, so we can label these. We could call these both alpha, for instance. I will do this for me in a second. In fact, I'm going to ask you to do this for me in a second. But what I'm trying to model for you here is, you're trying to look first, you're trying to see first, and then you're trying to communicate second. So we would do a proper like, formal proof of this. Okay? But first it's important that you see where you're going so you can map a path through. There's one isosceles triangle, and in the other you can see these two are going to be the base angles, as it were. Okay? So I'm going to call them beta and beta. Do you need me to tell you what to do next? What could you do? Who can see it? Hmm. Remember what you're trying to get to? You're trying to show that ACB is 90 degrees, which in the scheme I've just named a few things. That's alpha plus beta, right? Alpha plus beta. Now, keeping in mind that all of our alphas and betas are different. I really hope our alphas and betas are all different, right? This is true whatever alpha and beta are independently. But both of them together have to add up to 90. And just have a look at your diagram and you can see it, right? So how we should, what do we know about alpha and beta? We don't know very much, but we know enough. What do we know? Eric, what do you see? Well, I might suggest this might be completely wrong. That's all good. Those are the best suggestions. The third angle in both triangles is 180 minus 2 alpha or 180 minus 2 beta. Yes. Right? Yes. And you can sort of divide them and you get 90 minus alpha and 90 minus beta. Okay, so you're saying, for instance, this guy here, this guy here, is equal to 180 minus 2 alpha. Is that what you just said? Yeah. This one is 180 minus 2 alpha? So you want to like slice that in half? Is that what you're doing? That was actually the wrong thing to do. Okay, all right. Well, it's not, uh, I'm going to actually disagree with you. I don't think there's any wrong things you can do so long as you know, you're know you not violating the rules of geometry, but there are quick ways and there are efficient ways and there are less efficient ways to get to you know, our angle. I'm going to suggest you actually don't need to touch these angles at all. You can, but there's a way to get there, which is, I've done everything. No constructions more required. Hmm. I did that with those two. There's three it's, There's a faster way. What do you reckon, Paul? Yeah, what do you got? <coughs> go ahead. Tell me what you've done. Did you go through these angles in here or did you do something else? Okay, you can. This is fine. Like I said, I, I think it's not true to say it's wrong. It's just another way. Here's the way I like. I think it's nice and simple and doesn't require any fancy appealing to other angles. You've got all the angles you need. Okay? Have a look at this angle here. One angle, two angles, three angles in one big shape, right? What's the big shape? It's a triangle, right? One, two, three angles that add up to, in a triangle, they add up to two alpha plus two beta. That's, that's all of those angles all added up together, right? Is equal to 180 degrees. And there's of course a reason for this. You can go ahead and you can state the reason. But I, I'm there, aren't I? Aren't I there? Three lines is good. Two lines is a little better, okay? So this is what I mean. Circles are beautiful objects, okay? There's symmetry and wonderful shapes sort of tucked in there that you can take advantage of, okay? So I'm going to leave it to you to complete that proof formally, all right?